valuing an option is a little bit different from valuing stocks and bonds. In the case of stocks and bonds, you value them based on the present value of the future cash flows. In this case, the option is a, is a claim. It derives its value based on the asset that you can buy or sell. So in the case of a call option, you can, for example, buy shares of stock at the exercise price. So how much the call is worth depends on how much the stock is worth. Well, it turns out that the way that options get valued is through the concept of arbitrage. If we can create two portfolios that have the same level of risk and the same expected return, then they ought to be priced the same. And that's what we do here. And the simplest way to do this is by using what's known as the binomial option pricing formula. And the binomial model just assumes a very simple state of the world. There are only two possible things that can happen. The stock goes up in value or the stock goes down in value. Now, you can make this model more complicated and you can make you can give it more periods. We'll look at just a one period model here, but you can make it very complicated and it turns out that actually the model becomes the famous Black-Scholes option pricing model, although the Black-Scholes was derived first. So let me, let me just show you how this works. It's fairly straightforward. It should be fairly easy to understand. Um, let's start with the assumption. Let's use some notation. S is the current price of the stock. and let's say that's equal to 30. And we'll use some other notation. SU is going to be the price in the up state. Okay, so if the stock goes up, it's going to take on a value of SU, and let's assume that that's going to be $35. Let's say SD is the price in the down state. and let's assume that's equal to $25. So if we wanted to draw a payoff diagram, it would look like this. S can go up to SU, or it can go down to SD. And so it can go up to 35, or it can go down to 25, and right now it happens to be 30. Now, a call option gives you the right to buy the shares of stock at the exercise price. So let's set up a call option. So we'll let C be the current price of the call. And we don't know what that is. And we'll say CU is the price of the call in the upstate. We're going to have to figure out what that is, and we'll say CD is the price in the down state. And again, we want to figure that out. Well, let's think about this. The call option can go up, and if it goes up, okay, we get a value of CU that's going to be equal to the maximum of 0 or SU minus E, the exercise price. And the reason it's the maximum of SU or E is because if the stock sells for, if the price of the stock is less than the exercise price, you just throw it away. Right? Why would you use this call option to buy the stock at ten dollars a share when you can go on the market and buy it for two dollars a share. Okay, you just throw it away. So in this case, SU is 35. The exercise price we're assuming is we'll, we'll make the exercise price equal to 30. Okay, happens to be the current price of the stock. It doesn't have to be, it just happens to be in this example. So 35 minus 30 is 5. That's a positive number that's bigger than zero. So the, call, the value of the call in the up state is 5. Okay. Likewise, 
the value of the call in the down state is going to be equal to the maximum of 0 SD minus E. In this case, 25 is the price of the stock in the down state minus the exercise price, which is 30. That's minus 5. That's less than 0. So it takes on a value of 0. You just throw it away. Okay, don't have to use it. So because these two assets, the stock and the call option, move exactly in the same direction, they're perfectly positively correlated, you can create a hedged portfolio by buying stock and writing or selling call options. So we can create a portfolio that looks like this. The value of the portfolio is going to be equal to H, which is the number of shares of stock you buy, times the value of the stock, minus C, which is the value of the call option. So the reason it's negative is you sold these call options, so if they have value, it's costing you money. You owe someone else. Now, you can create a hedged portfolio. They move in opposite directions. So you can create a portfolio where the value of the stock in the upstate of the world equals the value of the stock, or I'm sorry, value of the portfolio in the upstate equals the value of the portfolio in the downstate. So you can set up the equation, okay? Value in the upstate is going to be H times the value of the stock in the upstate minus the value of the call in the upstate and it's going to equal again the number of shares of stock you have times the value of the stock in the downstate minus the value of the call in the downstate. If you do some algebra and you do some rearranging okay, you can solve for H. You can solve for what we call the hedge race ratio. Solve for H which we call the hedge ratio. And what the hedge ratio does is it tells us how many shares of stock to buy for every call option we write or sell so that we have a riskless portfolio. If you do that, okay, if you rearrange terms, and I'll dispense with all the algebra here, you'll get CU minus CD Okay, so the difference between the value of the calls in the up and the down state divided by the difference between the stock prices in the up and the down state. So if we wanted to, we could figure out what the hedge ratio was from our previous example. The value of the call in the up state was $5. The value of the, of the call in the down state was 0 the stock's price in the upstate was 35 in the downstate it was 25 so we're going to get 5 over 10 or 1 half so you should buy half a share of stock for every one call option you write now we know you can't buy half a share of stock you just need to maintain that ratio so you would buy you would buy one share of stock for every two call options you write Okay, and nobody buys one share of stock. So let's say you would buy 100 shares of stock and you would write 200 call options to maintain this correct proportion. Okay, we can now use this information to actually find the price of the stock. This is a riskless portfolio. Okay, you can prove it for yourself. So let me see if I can prove that. The value in the upstate is going to be one half times the $35 price minus zero, right? Is that correct? I'm sorry. The value of the call option in the upstate is what? Five. So let's see what we have here. We have, all right, this is, this is, I shouldn't have done it this way. Let me redo that. Okay, let's make it a two to one ratio. So let's say you buy one share of stock, so one times 35, and you write two call options. This will this, work out better, otherwise you get 
fractions. So you write two call options. The call options in the upstate of the world are worth 5. So you get 35 minus 10, 25. And the value in the downstate is going to be equal to one share of stock times the price of 25 minus two times, and the calls are worth zero in the downstate, also worth 25. So we've created this riskless portfolio. So because it's a riskless portfolio, it should earn the riskless rate of interest. So we can solve this out by essentially setting up our portfolio, okay, and then trying to find the value of the call option that earns the risk-free interest rate. Now it looks like I'm running out of time. YouTube only lets me put up 15-minute videos. So in the next video, I'll show you, I'll continue this example and I'll show you how to find the actual price of the call option.